Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm going to show you how I regulate this Omega 1000 series movement. If you're new to watchmaking, then here are a few pieces of information you'll need to know for this video. Regulating a watch means getting it to run well and keep accurate time in a variety of positions, which simulate the different positions of your wrist when you're wearing the watch. A time grapher listens to the beats of the watch and displays a graph depicting how well it's running. The display is connected to a movable holder for the watcher movement with a microphone that listens to the ticks and talks of the watch. These beats are then monitored and processed into the data you see on the time grapher screen. Rate refers to how accurately the watch keeps time, shown in plus or minus seconds per day. Amplitude is the strength or how strong the watch is beating. A higher number is better, but going too high can damage the watch. BE stands for beat error, which is a measure of how evenly the balance is oscillating. A beat error of zero means the watch is perfectly timed between the ticks and the tocks as the balance swings back and forth. Lift angle varies based on the type of movement and is a fixed amount in degrees. Beat is how many times per hour the watch ticks. Most mechanical watches tick between 4 and 8 times per second. 28,800 means that this watch ticks 8 times per second. This number is also referred to as VPH or vibrations per hour. And gain indicates how sensitive the microphone is in listening for the beats of the watch. I got the watch running yesterday and recorded the results of the time grapher with the movement in various positions so I have a performance baseline to improve upon. I let the watch run overnight for the lubricants to distribute and run smoothly. Let's see how it's running today before making any adjustments. Okay, it's the next day. The watch has a fresh wind. Let's see how we're looking today. So we're in the dial down position. So this is a pretty good start for the day. The only thing I'd want to tweak is that beat error. And the beat error disappears when you put the watch in the crown right position. So what I think we'll do now is, this is our baseline. I'm gonna try demagnetizing the watch because I haven't demagnetized since I started working on it. Let's do that. This is my beast of a demagnetizer, Lafayette Magnetic Tape Eraser. It's an oldie but goodie. The only caveat is you can't get it too close or it'll just suck the watch right up against the demagnetizer. So let's give this a try. Do it once from above and once from below. Making sure it's secure in my holder. We're gonna press the button and remove it and release it in one motion. Press. And I can feel the magnetic pull being exerted on the watch. Pull it away in a swirly motion. Release the switch. I'm gonna do it one more time from the other side. And release. Now we'll put it back on the time grapher and see if that made a difference. This is after demagnetizing. The beat error was cut in half. Oh, until I said that. All right, so the beat error is going between 0.1 and 0.2 milliseconds. The rate is about the same and the amplitude is nice at 312. Let's try crown right again. We'll let it set in for a minute and then we'll give it a fresh start. Well, the only adjustment I think I'll make at this time is just to try to slow it down by a second or two a day. Other than that, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing on this rebuild. Okay, let's take a closer look at the regulator on this Omega 1020 watch. This lever regulates the speed at which the watch runs. Under those two brass colored studs are the regulator boot and the uh, regulator pin. When you push this assembly clockwise, it effectively shortens the hairspring and makes the watch run faster. Moving it in the other direction, it will run slower um, this watch also has a micro adjuster for the regulation speed, and that's this screw right here. When you turn it clockwise, it makes the watch run faster, counterclockwise, 
and this return spring will move the regulator in the counterclockwise direction, which will make it run slightly slower. In addition, this watch has a regulator for the beat error. This is the assembly that the hairspring stud is attached to. And in effect, when you move this assembly, either counterclockwise or clockwise, it changes the relative position of the entire hairspring. So by turning this lever, you can align the impulse jewel on the balance to perfectly line up between the two banking pins of the pallet fork. So let's take a look at our graph. So right now we're running at about one second a day. This is a 0.6 screwdriver. This regulator screw is so tiny. Uh, but what I want to do is just try to slow down the watch by about a second. So let me see if I can gracefully get this in here. And I'll just turn that the slightest, smallest amount. And let's see if that has an effect on the rate. Here, I'll give myself a, a fresh trace. Okay, let's go in for one more very, very slight adjustment. Well, it just dropped to one second a day. Now let's see if we can drop that beat error. Just gonna sort of make a point of reference here. Where my stick is is where it's pointing. Let's see how hard this is to nudge. Oh, that moves very easily. Well, we were at 0.2. Now we're at 0.5, not the direction we wanted to go, but it's okay. We're settling in now at no beat error, which is fantastic. However, we made the rate go up. Let's see if we can get the timekeeping down a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's a full turn. Let's get a fresh trace. Well, that full turn was too much. So since we're counting, let's go back a half a turn. There we go. Clockwise a half a turn. Hey, and you can actually see the line go from a descending line to a flat line. I'm still satisfied with that 0.1 millisecond on the beat error. Okay, we're hovering right around minus one and minus three seconds a day. Amplitude is good. Beat error is low at 0.1. I'm going to give it just one more micro tweak clockwise to see if we can get some zeros on the board. And then we'll be done. There we go, just the smallest of turns. Give it a fresh trace. I promised you some zeros on that board. I really wanna make good on my promise. That's what I wanna see. Come on, can I have another zero? I really want another zero. I really like this micro adjuster. Zero, there's another zero. Three in a row, there we go. Four in a row, that's five people. We missed that last one, didn't we? Before we go to bananas on this, I'm gonna to switch to the crown right position and I'd like to see how it's running here now. Let's do a fresh trace. I'm not gonna worry as much about the beat error moving around on me, um, but what I do think I wanna do is speed the watch up just a bit since we are in negative numbers on uh, both settings. So let me do that real quick, and then we'll return it to this position. And we'll go a quarter turn. And I'm told if you're going to be off of zero, then you should have a little bit on the plus side. I guess it's better to be a little bit early than it is to be late. Okay, this is very binary, a lot of zeros and ones. And while the beat error did come up, the accuracy of the timekeeping or the rate is perfect. And with no further adjustment, let's return it to the dial down position and let's see how we're doing. Let's get a fresh trace. That concludes this segment on how to regulate an Omega 1000 series movement. In this case, it's the Omega 1020. I'm really happy with how that came out. I'll be doing a full service 
on this watch, so please watch for that video. I'm Mike, the channel is Watch With Mike, and I look forward to your comments in the space below. Hey, don't run away just yet. If you haven't already, please support the channel by giving this video a like, join the conversation by leaving a comment, check out my related videos, and click that subscribe button. It really helps, and I appreciate having you as a viewer.